Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. We're carrying on with our series of combined arms in DCS World and at the moment we're looking at ships and this is a massive field. I kind of wish I hadn't opened it although now I'm in it it's actually really cool. There is a lot to learn about these ships and it's going to take us a long time to get through them all but so be it. And we're all kind of learning together. You guys are helping me out and whatnot. All we've done so far is kind of a first pass over the Russian slash Soviet cruiser Moskva and the American Ticonderoga class cruiser and I think that was CG60 Normandy I think was the actual ship that we got in DCS. Next we're moving on to a frigate. We've got the US Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate. Now I'm not sure which actual ship because obviously all the ships are separate they're in a class you get a class you know in a frigate and within that class you get several ships we're not sure what actual hull number we get in dcs world if anyone knows let me know and this is a big class so we're just going to scroll down wikipedia just looking at um, some general information and to say that we've got you guys keep saying well this is cool cat but you haven't got a clue what you're talking about and uh, yeah you're absolutely right i don't so i've got uh, someone who's come and helped me uh, uh, uh who has first-hand experience of this say hello daishi hello and could just give us literally um uh, 10 seconds just telling us you know what 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 you what you are what you were yeah i served on uh, destroyers from 2003 to 2007 so we've got a man who was actually on destroyers. I'm not actually sure if we've got any destroyer to look at in DCS World. We'll just have to see. I can't remember. Um, we've got a lot more Russian ships than we have American. But uh, hopefully we'll see a lot of similarities between the Russian and the US counterparts. So, kicking off, let's just get a, a scope, a feel for how um, big this class of frigate was. And just a, a quick reminder of the frigate system that you guys have taught me. We go from corvettes, which I don't know any corvettes, but I'm guessing they're pretty small. Then we go frigates, then we go destroyers, and then we go cruisers. And so we're on our first frigate. So here is a hull number of an absolute first ship in this class, the Oliver Hazard Perry. And that is FFG7. And can you let us know, Game of Daishi, what FFG is? It represents a guided missile frigate. Roger, so it's a guided missile. So it's based around guided missiles, right? Roger that, yeah. And we've got uh, FFG7 all the way down to FFG61. And that's just the ones that were, if you like, United States manufactured. And we've also got uh, Australian manufactured here, two hull numbers. And we've got Spanish built here. And we've got Taiwan built here. There may be more. Um, I don't know if, if there are any more. All of the foreign built ones are still in service. All of the American built ones, so 7 all the way to 61, have all been decommissioned and presumably superseded by, you know, more, a modern, more modern class. Um, so these were built from 1977. So that is fairly old, isn't it? And, um, and the latest built was 1989 and retired all the way up to the latest retirement i think it was 2015. uh in fact some of them have been it says transferred to polish navy so some of them and turkish and egyptian some of them have been scrapped presumably some of them have been transferred to different navies so we've got a full list of exactly what happened to the hulls here whether they were transferred or sold or whether they were disposed of by dismantling. Very interesting. Okay, that's that. We've got all the names down here. If anyone watching served on any of these vessels, I'd love to know, obviously, because it's just cool. Hey, also, a fun fact, uh, I did serve with two frigates. So it was in my battle group. Well, not in the battle group exactly, but they're in the same port, the uh, Gary and the Vandy. Are they in Are they in this class, or they're in a different class? Uh, that would be this class. So what was the first one? Did you say Gallery? Uh, Gary FFG 51 and then uh, 48. Yeah, Gary, that is a weird name for a ship, man. But that is right. So you say on this one here, which is amazing, and it's gone to Taiwan now. You'll be happy to know. So it's got a new home. And what was 48 was the other one? Yeah, well, I mean, like they're they're with me. I wasn't on them. Oh, Roger. Okay, right. Well, you were close to them then. Yeah. Okay, and yeah, they've both been sold now. That's pretty cool. All right. Um. So. So a question I'll ask you before we go, in fact, just operators, and then I'll ask you a question. Operators out of interest are Australia, uh, Bahrain, Egypt, Pakistan, Poland, Spain, Turkey, Taiwan, obviously United States. Most of them manufactured in the, 90s, in the United States, some of them manufactured abroad, as we had a look. So my question to you next. Now, I still don't really understand mo modern uh, naval fleets. Uh, uh, my, my knowledge of... Uh, naval um, stops at the end of you know the end of the dreadnoughts at kind of you know World War One coming into World War Two and obviously it's very different from them. What would you say would be the main um, task 
of a Oliver Hazard Perry f class frigate in a modern, um, you know, naval oper actual combat operation in a fleet. Well, when it still had its missiles, it would be used to uh, escort uh, convoys, supplies. Uh, it would also protect like landings. Uh, you would probably see in the coffee campaign, if you look at one of the earlier ones, when you landed all the tanks on it, you'd notice the two Perrys were just sitting right next to Mm -hmm. Yeah, Roger that. Interestingly, tomorrow we're starting off naval operations in coffee campaign again. I'm, I'm planning how to use my cruisers and my frigates. I don't really know what I'm doing at the moment. I'm, I think I'm going to probably find out the hard way, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, uh, what we should do now is, because there's not a huge amount of history here, we'll just quickly read through the history. It won't make the video too long. So, the, so this class of frigates made worldwide news in the 1980s. Uh, despite being spooled, these frigates were known to be extremely durable. During the Iran-Iraq War on 17th of May 1987, the USS Stark was attacked by an Iraqi war plane struck by two XZ anti-ship missiles. Um, any, do we know what those war planes were? I can't think what would have been taken by Iraqis. That would have been a Soviet plane of some kind, I imagine, a MiG-23 or something. Um, and we're talking about these XZ missiles. They have whopping great warheads on them, don't they? Yeah, they got 14, 1,480 a pound for Roger, so that's just roughly worked out in my head. That is 0.75 ton or something like that. So that is a thumping great machine, that is, of a, of a missile. Okay, so we got hit by two of them, it says. 37 Navy sailors died in the in the deadly prelude to a mic op American Operation Ernest Will, the reflagging and escorting of oil tankers to the Persian Gulf and Straits of Hornets. Hormers. Less than a year after, on the 14th of April 1988, USS Samuel B. Roberts, uh, presumably in the same class, yes, FFG-58, was nearly sunk by an Iranian mine. No lives were lost, but 10 sailors were evacuated from the warship for medical treatment. The crew of Samuel B. Roberts battled fire and flooding for two days, ultimately managing to save the ship. So a mine is, a mine is really big, isn't it? What kind of warhead have we got on a mine, do we think? Could depend. Yeah, the other thing too is it's not necessarily a warhead, but it also generates a like a giant uh, vacuum and then water goes rushing in it'll pull the ship down with it so it can it can do multiple stresses to it. Roger. Uh, the US Navy uh, retaliated four days later with Operation Praying Mantis, that's a cool name, um, a one-day attack on Iranian oil platforms, oh we've got to do that, used as bases for raids on merchant shipping. Those had included bases for the mine laying operations that damaged some B. Roberts. Both frigates were repaired in American shipyards and returned to full service. Stark was decommissioned in 1999 and scrapped 2006. Roberts was de decommissioned in 2015. On April 18th, 1988, USS Simpson was, what is he, he is FG, FFG 56, was accompanying the cruiser USS Wainwright and frigate USS Bagley, so it's F R. So USS Bagley is a frigate, but not an FFG. Uh, when they came back, came under fire from Iranian gunboat Josham. Don't have a picture for it. It's a French-made command class uh, missile boat, which fired a US-made harpoon missile at the ships. The Simpson having the only clear shot. The frigate fired an SM-1 standard missile which struck Joshan, I told, I told everyone they were anti-ship missiles, uh, Simpson fired three more SM-1s and later naval fire from Wainwright sank the Iranian vessel. Cool. Uh, durability. On July 14th, 2016, the ex-USS FAC, it was FFG-43, um, took over 12 hours to sink after, after being used in a live fire Sinkex, Sinkex, whatever that means, sink experiment? Uh. Glorified target practice. Oh, job. During naval exercise RIMPAC 2016, during the exercise, the ship was directly or indirectly hit with the following ordnance. A harpoon missile from a South Korean submarine. Didn't realise they could fire harpoons. Another harpoon missile from the Australian frigate Ballarat. A Hellfire missile from an Australian uh, Navy Black Hawk, you know, the 60 helicopter. Another harpoon missile and a Maverick missile from a USS Maritime Patrol craft, another harpoon from the US cruiser USS Princeton, additional Hellfire missiles from a helicopter 900 Kilo Mark 84 bomb from the US Hornet, the one we drew up, a GBU-12 Paveway 
500 pound bomb from an Air Force B-52 bomber and a Mark 48 torpedo, basically everything. Now here's the thing, because there's a lot of, no one really knows how much damage these ships can take. Uh, and so if you, I don't know if you watched a video of the, ma, 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 uh, I was shooting the Moskva with the Ticonderoga and I hit it with uh, one harpoon and it didn't do much damage. And then I hit it with another seven harpoons. I didn't sink it. I did damage it, but I didn't sink it. And there was a lot of um, um, outrage on the internet. People were saying that should have been sunk after two harpoons and whatnot. But here we see that a smaller vessel, literally a third of the weight, third of the weight, just sucked in what was I read out there. Five, six harpoons plus giant bombs plus all this other stuff. And that took 12 hours to sink. So... I'm not really, I'm not, you know, it's very possible that these things can take a lot of damage. Have you got anything you want to add to that in terms of kind of durability and damage? Nah, in general, it's just, it's really hard to really knock out a warship from what I know. Mm. Uh, let's go through the statistics. So I'm looking at the top right now, the class overview. Name, Oliver Hazard Perry class. Bath Ironworks, but all the different builders here. Um, don't really need to go through them because they're in different countries and whatnot. All the operators we've been through, it was preceded by the Brook class. Let's have a look at him. So that. And the Brook class would not have been an FFG, I don't think. So it wouldn't have guided missiles. Uh, scratch that. I'm just reading. But with the addition of the Tar Tartar guided missiles. So it sounds like these were the first with the first with the guided missiles. That Tartar missile is part of the three T's, as they call it. Tartar, Terrier, and... Uh... Oh, I forgot the tournament. I think it was like terrorists or something. Mm -hmm. And so when was this in history? Is this 70s? 60s, 70s, I'm guessing? Uh, 60s to 70s. Um, the smaller one, which I think was the Tartar, was used on small warships. The Then you got the Terrier, which would become, like, they'd be on medium ships. Mm -hmm. And the large ones, which Taylor sets the name of it, those would be on the giant old World War II style cruise. Roger that, yeah, gotcha. Okay, so then we've got this class. Uh, Oliver has a, has a Perry class, and we'll talk about the missiles and stuff in a bit. And then superseded by the Freedom and the Independence class. Oh, look at these. These look new. They're like little stealth boats. Two classes and Independence. Let's have a look at him. Wow, look at that. I didn't even know such things existed. Are these in service now, these stealth things? Yep. Uh... Wow. The thing was, towards the end of the Perry's uh, tenure, it proved that it was really good at being really close at shore, what they'd call brown water or littoral combat. Mm -hmm. And then these ships were specifically built for it, whereas the Oliver Hazard Perry just kind of stumbled into that role. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wonder if we'll get these in DTS at some point. Okay, and then we've got subclasses. I'm guessing that means subclasses of the Oliver Hazard Perry. So just have a quick look. So we've got an Adelaide class is is a ship class of six guided bits of uh, frigates constructed in Australia. Class is based on the modified. For, okay, so they're slightly modified for that particular country then for whatever reason. Okay, that's fine. The cost um, is significantly less than a cruiser the cruiser was roughly about one billion dollars for the um sorry i forgot what it's called T T T T the, the cruiser and the cost of these is 122 million roughly i know it depends on you know which year it was but about a tenth or about a ninth as much so much less in fact it's about the cost of two f 15 so <laughs> it's i don't know i think i'd rather have the boat to be honest constructed 1975 2004 in commission 1977 and present in foreign navies 71 were planned 71 were completed and here are the active ones in service and 38 retired so the type is a guided missile frigate so we know that the displacement is 4100 long tons. any idea what it means by long tons i i saw a youtube video of it but i can't remember off the top of my head right now yeah i'm not sure what that means anyway it's just over 4000 and to compare that the russian cruiser moskova um was uh, over 12,000 and the uh, Ticonderoga was oh blast I've forgotten now 9,000 about 9,000 I think sorry if I've got that wrong uh, the length is for just over 400 feet at waterline and bigger overalls and some of them were long haul for, uh, long hull frigates okay the beam was 45 feet uh, that's the width the draft below the water 22 feet propulsion 
2 times General Electric LM2530 gas turbines generating 41,000 ship horsepower through a single sh single shaft and variable pitch propeller. So just one propeller on this and just one shaft and two engines. And that's a lot less horsepower than the cruiser Moskova, which was 120, 130,000 horsepower. And two times auxiliary propulsion units, 350 horsepower retractable electric azimuth thrusters for maneuvering and docking right so these guys these are the ones that are kind of pointing sideways left and right yeah i double checked it did have a single screw on it i was wrong right now okay so they must have a gearbox that can that can take both engines down to one shaft forty-one thousand horsepower okay that makes sense and we know now why um they use uh, these gas turbines it's because of efficiency uh, and power to weight ratio at the end of the day and uh, ease of change uh, and whatnot speed over 29 knots so that it's actually slower than the cruisers that we've both cruisers that we've been looking at which are 31 plus knots so it's an interesting th thing that is slow i would have thought they would have, this would be faster but um i guess it's just got less power at the end of the day so that's that range 4500 miles at cruise uh, as opposed to the 12,000 of the moskva and the 6,000 at cruise of the american cruiser Complement 176, which is very low to the 450 of the Moskova and the 360 of the uh, American cruiser. Sensors and processing, so it'll be interesting to see what we've got here compared to the cruiser. We've got a radar, an AN SPS 49. The AN SPS 49 is a, so this is a spinning mesh type search radar, is a United Navy's two-dimensional long-range air search radar built by Raytheon that can provide contact bearing and range information. It is primary air search radar for numerous ships in the US fleet and in Spain and Poland. Okay, so we're going to see that on the vessel. Also, an AN SPS-55, so that's that little thing, is a solid-state surface search and navigation radar. It was developed by Cardion Electrics for the US Navy under a contract awarded in 1971. It was originally developed for a class of ships known as patrol frigates, but it was also installed on numerous cruisers, destroyers, frigates. Okay, so that is our navigation and uh, surface search. And a Mark 92 fire control system. I'm not sure we're going to get. Uh, okay, fire control system is a US built medium range anti aircraft missile and gun fire control system. It was developed for the FFG Oliver Hazard Perry class guided missile frigates. The system is a licensed USN version of the Sales Netherland fire control system. Right, and you can see there's a lot of stuff involved in it. it ECM, there's all the different weapons that we're about to go and look at. See, there's a seawiz there, so it's all integrated in this Mark 92 fire control system. Okay, that's interesting. And we've got sonar SQS 56 and SQR 19 towed array. So this is presumably on board, either active or passive, or active and passive. And SQR is the towed array. So when it says towed, that means literally it's towed in a kind of mini vessel behind, isn't it? There's a cable that they release with mm. the with the sonar. Roger, that's pretty cool. And is that to suck in torpedoes, presumably? Um, it just acts as a, a passive sonar. It just gives you like more than one to work with. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, uh, electronic warfare, where it gets a bit confusing. The SLQ-32V2 Flight 3 with Sidekick. The Mark... No idea what that means, by the way. Um, the Mark 36 SRBOC. Now, I, from memory, know a bit about... Oh, there we are. BAE Systems Mark 36 Super Rapid Bloom Offboard Countermeasure Chaff and Decoy Launch System is a short-range mortar that launches chaff and infrared decoys from the naval vessels to foil anti-ship missiles. So flares, a bit like an aircraft, flares and chaff, but on a much bigger scale. You know, sends out uh, packs the size of your head. Um, okay, so we know about that. Um, I've never actually seen them firing DCS, so I don't think they actually fire in DCS, but whether they're modelled to some degree, I don't know. Mm, I doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, an AN SLQ-25 Nixie is, and its variants is a towed torpedo decoy used on the in the US and allied warships and consists of a towed decoy device, TB-14A, and a shipboard signal generator. The decoy emits signals to draw torpedoes away from its intended target. Okay, cool. Anything you want to add to the ECM? Actually, when I was mentioning that start thing, that sidekick was added in as part of it. It gave it a jamming capability. 
it originally didn't have that. Roger. So that's so right. So that's regards a jammer, like a a noise jammer or something like that. Roger. That makes sense. I'm going to go on to everyone's favourite bit now, the armament. One single arm Mark 13 missile launcher with 40 missile magazine that contains, and we'll just hold it there. So Mark 13, so this the Mark 13 is a single arm launcher, which means you know it can fire one missile at a time. And then my understanding is it somehow automatically can re-equip itself from a magazine. Is that right? Yeah, it's uh, the missiles are stored underneath it. It's like in a like in a circular configuration. There's an arm down there. I'll grab it and then uh, lift it up to the one. Roger. None of that's um, none of that's kind of modelled in TTS. So it'd be lovely to see that arm kind of doing whatever it does. I can't even imagine what it does. But okay, that sounds cool. So we've got the Mark 13, which is this. Then we have what I know of, the Mark 26, which is a twin-arm launcher that you get on the Ticonderoga, the first Ticonderogas, and then that they were all eventually um, replaced by the vertical launch system. Is that correct? Basically, with this single-arm launch, you have to like point it towards the target before you can fire it, Yeah. whereas VLS, you can just launch it up, and it'll, once it clears the superstructure, it just goes where... Roger. And... Can does the VLS have a better rate of fire as well than these launchers, or is that a myth? Uh, yeah, greatly. Like I think it this single arm can fire a SM1 every 13 seconds. Mm -hmm. I think it's like 20 or 30 seconds for the harpoons it can fire. Mm -hmm. Roger that. And I think it's about the VLS is about two seconds in between. So that's yeah, obviously a massive advantage if you get Russian bears lobbing multiple missiles at you. Okay, so that will make sense. Uh, let's carry on. Um, the magazine contains SM1. So I've looked at SM2s in DCS, uh, but we haven't looked at SM1s yet. MR, an anti-aircraft guided missile and a harpoon anti-ship missile. Right, so this arm is going to fire either harpoons or SM1s. Okay, that's fine. Uh, removed from the U.S. Navy ship starting in 2003 due to the retirement of the SM-1 missile from the U.S. service. So in 2003, the SM missile was removed. Was it replaced by anything then? On some of, on some ships, I know they put a, a bushwhacker turret on it. Right. Okay. So it's not much of a replacement then for a 50-mile missile. What's a bush a bushwhacker? Did you say? What's that? Oh, the Bushmaster. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's, it's right under it. Yeah, so it's, it's just a gun at the end of the day, isn't it? More or less. <laughs> Roger. Okay, right. Fair enough. Uh, so I'm guessing they were relying on the on the cruisers for their anti-aircraft ability or, or whatever. But Okay. Mark 38 Mod 2 Naval Gun System uh, installed on platforms over... Oh, you just said exactly what you just said. Yeah, so the Bushmaster on platforms over the, the removed Mark 13 launchers which are presumably radar guided by the looks of, looks of things uh, which is a, as the M242 it's the same one as in the um, Abrams fighting vehicle Bradley fighting vehicle okay so we'll probably get shot by that today okay it's also got two triple Mark 32 anti-submarine warfare torpedo tubes with Mark 46 or Mark 50 anti-submarine warfare torpedoes so we're going to see these tubes somewhere on this vessel um, to fire these torpedoes out at submarines. Any idea on the range of this type of system? Ooh, I don't remember what the range of torpedoes are. Okay, we've also got one 020 Malara 70, ooh, big gun, 76 mil, 62 caliber naval gun, uh, presumably radar driven as well. And we can pretty much shoot this at anything. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to shoot this at ships and or ground target, possibly air targets, the big gun, the big 120mm gun in the cruiser, the Ticonderoga class, we can shoot at ship, we can shoot at airplanes as well, and we can shoot at hostile missiles. So it's a pretty nice piece of kit. So um, I haven't got time to read for it fully now, but we'll have a play with that. One, oh, it's only got one times 20mm failing. So this is the uh, Vulcan cannon that's independent radar driven um, and backup optical driven and or IR driven. I haven't quite determined that yet to shoot down oncoming missiles. All close flying planes in DCS. Uh, we've got eight these. What on earth is this? A Sung Feng 2 SSM or 4 HF2 supersonic anti ship missiles. What is this? 
Any idea what it's talking about? The Sung Feng Two? No, I don't. That's the first I've heard of this. Is Institute of Technology in the H2 is designed to be delayed, deployed aboard ships or at facilities on land. An airborne version. Absolutely have no idea what to expect from that. If we've got it modelled in DCS, we're, we're not sure. We'll have a look. Or for HF2 and HF3 supersonic anti ASHM plus two Beaufort 40mm uh, guns on Taiwanese vessels. Oh, Taiwanese vessels only. Oh, scratch all that. That was all about Taiwanese only. So. That was why that was confusing. And aircraft carried two, ah, two choppers, I had no idea. Two lamps, multi-purpose helicopters. The SH-2 Sea Sprite lamps, lamps one on the short-hulled ships, or the SH-60 Seahawk lamps three on the long-hulled ships. And the lamp systems, any idea whether they were for detecting submarines? Is that right, or anything else do we think? They can do that, but they're like multi-purpose type choppers. They can do things like search and rescue. You could they yeah, got a few missiles you could fire at ships or targets. They could also mount the uh, that chain gun that's on the Huey. Roger. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Right. The next thing to do is we've gone through the information here. We've got a good idea of what we've got to use. We're now going to go into DCS, see what it says about the uh, its weapons, and then start using it. So, okay. So we've got this in DCS now, and the reason I like to check here is because sometimes it differs ever slightly. Some of the missile, some of the weapons aren't added. So what we've got here is a complement of 206. That varies a bit. The tonnage displacement, uh, 4,100. Yep, that's the same. Uh, that looks about the same. The speed's the same. The range is the same. The armament here it says two times four anti-ship harpoons, uh, which I'm pretty sure is going to be fired by the Mark 13 arm launcher there. And it's also got what it calls SAM standard one times 76. So I'm going to assume that means the SM1. Uh, we'll see when we start firing, but I'm pretty sure it's talking about the SM1. One times 76. I think that's referring to this gun here. Yeah, that's referring to this gun here. So the 1x76 Otto Malera gun, which is this little chap here. He's going to have a 360-degree turret, and it's going to be doing our shooting. And a 1x... They write them a bit funny here. 1x6 20mm Vulcan Phalanx gun. That's him at the back there. So we need to remember that when we're trying to fight off um, hostile missiles that we don't want to get our antenna towers in the way. Uh, and two times uh, SH-60 Lamps 3 uh, helicopters. Right, so that's that. What we're going to do now is pop into the game, have a closer look at our antennae and stuff, and uh, seeing a distinct lack of small weapons like M2 machine guns and stuff like that. You might see it when it loads in, maybe. I'm not sure. I'll jump. But then again, that Malera gun is... It's a little smaller than a 5-inch, and mm -hmm. it's just... I think it's able to fire, like, 70 rounds a minute or something like that. Wow. Also, I notice it's quite high up, so it can kind of angle down, whereas the, the the previous one before couldn't angle down. It would shoot its own hull if it did. Right, so I'm going to click on Blue and Game Master to get in here. First of all, as ever, we're going to just go and have a closer look at the model because it's fun and we can. Okay, so here we go. Ah, I just noticed. I should have noticed this before, but this is FFG46. So can you uh, quickly look up what, which one FFG46 is, please, and see yeah, what it's... I know. I know that one's the long haul. Ah, what was the name of this one then? Uh, I think it should say in the back. Traditional US. Ah, uh, oh, hello, rents. It's, it's the rents. Is what it is. Wow, it's the first time I knew this. So we've got FFG forty six rents. I should have really spotted that before, but never mind. These things happen. Right. So I'm starting to learn about these ships now. What I can tell you is that is a Mark. Three Mark 13 single arm magazine loaded fully automated launcher firing SM1 type missiles and or harpoons but SM1 at the moment and we think it's got about 13 plus a second reload time uh, up here we have the anti-air or the air search antenna with 360 coverage two dimensional radar only I'm going to try and find you next the surface radar and I Sorry about the weird aspect, it's just difficult to control. I think that is it there, the surface scan navigation and surface radar. Okay. Uh, let's see what else I know, and then you can start picking me up on bits that I've missed. Uh, we've got our uh, boat here that can go out and carry people on small adventures. Ah, look, missed small guns that weren't mentioned before. That is, I'm going to guess... Is that Bushmaster or an M2? I'm going to probably get it wrong and say that's an M2, but it looks fully automated to me. So we'll come back to that. 
Um, here is our Malara, Malara gun, sorry if I say it wrong, 76mm uh, automated radar guided cannon that we'll be using later on. Um, I'm looking for a torpedo tube. Uh, we've got another gun here. Again, it looks kind of automated. Now, I might have that completely wrong, but I'm guessing half inch M2 again, and it probably will fire at us when we get closer to the ship. Yeah, your torpedo tubes are right next to those automated guns you're talking about. Is it these things? I don't. Yeah, I don't think they're auto guns, but yeah, those are the uh, torpedo tubes. Right, so they'll just spin around, I'm guessing, and then pop, you know, it'll just basically thump out of here into the sea and go and guide towards the submarine. Yeah, pretty much uh, uh, air pressure fired. Roger, they look a lot, the reason I didn't go for them is because they look a lot smaller than what I thought, but then again, they're as big as this boat, so they must be actually be pretty big in real life. It's hard to get a scale without a human here. Okay, that's that. Um, right, where were we around here? So we've got the torpedoes, we've got the these guns, and we'll find out a bit more about them in a bit. Uh, now, I also saw, ba ba ba, I've forgotten the name, I apologise, but the uh, the launchers here, the chaff and flare launchers, there and there, pretty sure that's going to be right. Um, let's have a look what else I know. So back from the Malara, we've got the Phalanx obviously here with its own radar here and its own optical slash IR backup guidance there in case it needs that. We've got the, we've got some antennas here and I'm going to get in trouble by the internet because I can't remember what they are, but we'll go through that in a minute. Here we've got the helicopter landing area. Always has this kind of little bunker here, which I'm pretty sure is going to be for guiding the helicopters in, helping them along with an array of lights and whatnot here. But I don't think we have working DCS. I'd, I'd be amazed if they were. I think that is my knowledge. So things that we need to still identifying are, you see we've got a dome at the top here and a dome there. Um, do we think they might be the gunfire control, part of the, um, the 90, Mark 92 uh, fire control system? The large one, maybe? I'm not so sure about the small one. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to tell with the ray dome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, roger that. Also, I just noticed we've got these little things here, so I'll see if I can get a closer look at them. And that looks like something that's going to be shot out. We've already covered the... Pretty sure I've already covered the chaff and flare, so I'm not sure what these guys here, they're going to be shot out, unless there's something I've missed. No, I don't think... There's no other missiles apart from the Mark 13. So it'll be interesting to see what these are. Uh, yeah, I can tell you those. Send. Uh, those ones are known as uh, NOCA launchers there. They work in conjunction with the uh, the shaft and flare launchers. Ah, and what do they actually fire? They fire a rocket that floats in the air, and it sends a signal that looks like the ship. So it's more meant to seduce uh, anti-ship missiles away from your ship. Wicked, Roger. And I very much doubt they're modelled in DCS, but we shall see. Um, these bucket things. Um, I don't think we ever got to the bottom of what these are. Any idea? I think those are for like. You know, some sort of satellite communications or ah, something like that. That would, extra that would explain why they're pointed up, wouldn't it? Look at that. You could probably swivel around and track a satellite. Yep, I, I'll, I'll buy that. Okay. These are the little things that automatically deploy uh, kind of little life rafts for the guys. If she goes that. Look, and that, an M2. That is an official M2 there. Hand, uh, you know, cranked by humans. I'm just trying to compare the size of that to this one here. I think they're the same. Yeah, I think they're M2s. Okay, is there anything else we haven't covered? Awesome little little look crow's nest there, I love that. I'm going to go for one of these pods, either that one or the front one being the fire control system for the gun because it was on cruiser. Chimneys, little places to stand here. Also you can climb up. So we can climb up here to the top here to do maintenance or whatever we want. And we've got more uh, equipment here. Now a lot of these things are for weather. Uh, a lot of these poles and rods uh, for measuring weather, I remember. Um, any idea what you'd think? That looks... Sorry for the jumping about. It's just me being an idiot. Stand by. Any idea what that chap is? He looks like navigation. What do you think about that? Yeah, that I know that it's some civilian uh, yeah. navigation radar, mm -hmm. but I don't remember very much about it. Roger. I also notice we've got two M2s here as well, so I'm going to be shot at those, I bet, as well. So we've now see, seen at least six M2s on this thing, hidden away. It weren't mentioned on the credits beforehand, so that's all very interesting. And uh, what else? I don't think I've got anything else to cover. Actually, here's one other thing I could add. Send. Do you see the uh, the triangular thing next to the yep. radome? 
Yeah, that's that. the uh, that's that slick. What or the S oh, you know, the uh, ECM, yeah. So this is doing well, jamming kind of thing. I think this version is, acts more of like an RWR. Roger. I don't know where the sidekick would be. That would be the jamming thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see, and there's going to be one over the other side as well. Kind of get over here. Yep, there's one either side, so that could be, yeah, definitely RWR base, detecting planes and stuff like that. And that's pretty cool. Any idea what these little huts are down here? Kind of, little, there's little houses in here. Are they, or maybe they're just like transformers or something? I think it might be storage, maybe for the shaft launchers and stuff. Roger. I don't know. Interesting. Okay, so that is a good look round it. Um, can't see anything else obvious. Oh, any idea these um, these aerials, these tall stick up aerials on the in the middle here, going up? Uh, those are also like some calm stuff. Roger, that makes sense. Okay, I can't think of anything to add. Anything you want to add to that before we start driving slash shooting her? I don't know. I think we covered it pretty good. Roger, stand by for the next phase. So the first thing we want to do is to test the gun out. And I could shoot a ship with this, but I'm not. I'm going to try and shoot some ground troops we've got here. Now, this can be a little tetchy sometimes. Like I've always said with um, combined arms ships, they're clunky, they're a little bit difficult to use. They test your temper a bit, so we'll just see how it goes. So I'm going to try firing from here. Now, the main uh, thought is that I don't want to shoot through my antenna towers. So I've just got to be a little bit careful. Um, so what I'm going to do, in fact, is move her. So I'm going to go F10. I'm going to move her. I'm going to click on her here. I'm going to set path here. And I'm going to go kind of in that direction there. And then there. Left click, left click, right click. Move the speed up. I'm going to see if this is fixed yet. The red-green problem. It's not. You see there's a problem at the moment where I set it to red. And then move off it and then come back onto it. And it goes back to green. This is why we can't make the, the ships fight properly against each other at the moment. Because there seems to be a problem there that I can't figure out. So we'll just have to do our best. Right, she should be moving now. So stand by. Okay, now we're not sure of the max range of the Malara gun. We think it's about 20 kilometers. So we're going to have a pop at something over there in the distance. So I'm just going to quickly add a target. And I'm just going to fire in the middle of these guys for the moment. Let's see if we can get the gun firing. Yep. No. This is going to do it. He's not going to do it, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be because we're out of range. So what I'm going to do next is to ask him to get a little bit closer. Stand by. So I'm going to set a new path towards this guy here. Like thus. And I'm going to send him on his way. Maximum 29 knots. Do, do, do. Check the range. Um, right, we are five miles away, so I'm going to see if we can get it firing now. We'll just see. Fire in the middle there. There we go. Now we're cooking on gas. Got some action. And um, it looks like he's not going to fire for a while. So we speed up time and he may or may not fire. Depend there. For some reason he likes a lovely big delay. Um, so I'm going to quickly look here. See if that bullet's going to come down. Oh, hey! Nice. Right, let's see if we can get him to engage these targets properly. I don't know if he will. We're going to let him fire on those targets himself. And the way we're going to do that is get within range. We've got him here on ROE fire rather than return fire. So we're going to set a path here. Left, left, right. Uh, you know what? That's near enough. And put his speed up. Get him going. And when he's good and ready, he's going to spot those targets himself and fire at them. <laughs> oh, look how quick he's firing. That's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. You know what? I'm wondering if it was firing a different type of shell from farther away. But then when it gets closer, it just goes like smoke. Oh, so it can work when you do it properly like this. But if I try and do it uh, manually from further away, it just lobs one shell every minute. I don't know what the reason for that is, that's just how it is. And that, you'd agree, was some, was some pretty awesome destruction. Yeah, that's a pretty good record. Still firing, look. Jesus. So that's what they can do when they're used correctly. 
Anyway, that is our uh, gun, our 76mm gun. Okay, next we're going to go make him attack the... Uh, the FFG Neustraschimi, Neustraschimi, which is this guy here. He is an equivalent FFG on the Russian side. I don't know what it's equipped with because we haven't done a video on this yet. So what we're going to do is send our vessel towards his vessel. And we're going to go set path and we're going to go over here somewhere. We want them to find each other roughly sidewards on uh, so that they're going to be able to use their defensive measures the best. Now... The problem we've got, as I've shown you, is that I can't set these to red uh, state. So I can't get them to use all of their weapons. That's just how DCS is at the moment. I can't do anything about it. So we'll just have to interpret it as best we can. Uh, the actual defenses they would use. I'm going to send this guy up this way. And they're going to find each other. The way it works in DCS is they're going to work on a line of sight basis. So once they see each other, uh, and with about 25 miles, that is roughly with the Earth's curvature, or at least in DCS, 25 miles they're going to start firing whatever they want to fire at each other i'm going to let them target themselves rather than me trying to set uh, uh our guy attacking him manually as long as we've got roe fire that's how it works so the missiles they're going to use is harpoons for this guy here and i don't know what the ffg noistrashimi uses so we'll just see so let's speed up until we get them close to each other okay they're going to see each other real soon The building tension. Either that or they're just going to completely... Oh, we've got missiles out. So let's have a pause. And we've got the AGM-84. We've got the harpoons going out. Two of them. S models from our guy here. So that's going... Whoops. That's going from our Mark 30 launcher, which you can see there. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Let's see if we can see one going off. So that must be reloading, maybe. No, not sure. I'm not sure. 448 knots on the deck. Now this guy, is he doing something? He's just ignoring him completely. This is not a good fighting technique, Mr. Noistrashimi. Not very sporty. Not really. So let's see what happens. Is this guy going to fire again? He looks like he just wants to fire two, and that's it. And that's what he, how he rates this guy, basically. Yeah, the missile launch is not moving again. Yeah, it looks like it has an SM2 back yeah, on the rail. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Oh, SM1. So these missiles go fairly slow, 448 knots, but they go low. Very hard for these guys here to shoot them down. Now let's see what this guy is. Is he equipped with anything useful? I can't see a phalanx on there. So this guy is probably just going to take it. Also, one fun fact is, is that the harpoons typically, they won't activate their radar until they get in the terminal. Sort of ah. like the... Uh, Phoenix, so mm -hmm. he might not know he's getting shot at. I don't know. Interesting. That is interesting. Oh, shit. Things are happening. Things are happening. He's got SA-15 gauntlets going down, coming up. So we're firing these these at him, and he's firing these gauntlets, which are the SA-15 uh, blast um, tour fires. How interesting. And that is that. Let's see if he fires another. So I wonder where these are getting shot from. They're getting shot. Oh, look, he's got a vertical launch system. He's got a VLS in there. That is cool. Didn't know that. Boom, harpoon down. It's anyone's game at this point. Right, and this guy's retaliating now. What have we got going? We've got... It's going to be more harpoons. In the fire against sir? I think he is. So what we need is a change of doctrine now. We're going to head towards each other to make sure they kill each other. So set path. And this guy, set path. Oh, I just missed that harpoon. That's annoying. Right, so it's going to be the same thing until they get close and start Vulcan in each other. And this guy is going to do... I uh, didn't mean to do that. This guy is going to... SA-15 is way out of trouble again, I think. So this guy has got a, v, a little mini v, a VLS in the, in the center, in the front there. That I know it's not very well modeled, but... Probably an old model. Let's see the distance that he fires at. Four miles, so he's about to fire. If he wants to defend himself. So those harpoons turn their radar on, I guess, about now, and he spots them and fires at them. There we go. Yeah, that's how you going on. Boom. Missed. He missed. And he hit. Look at that. I'm curious how many of those he has. Yeah, I will see. They're definitely modelled, the amount, because I've run out of missed. There they go. 
I've run out of missiles before with boats. Boom! Awesome. Right, we are now sailing to each other, and to a certain death, we've got more going out. He's not giving up harpoons. How many harpoons have we got is the question now. And they can see each other now. I thought they could. Where is he? I really want to see one of these harpoons firing. So it shows an SM1, and then it turns into... There it is. Yeah, it just turns into a harpoon. Yeah, it looks like it's where it just isn't modeled at all. Roger. There's our, there's our adversary. If I can get the camera around, there he is. Come get some! This is going to be cool. This is literally anyone's game at the moment. Okay, now I've seen no offence from this guy. I've told him to fire, but he's not firing anything. Maybe he's only got the gun. And what happens when the guns start going off? Just don't know. Maybe it's a defensive frigate? Maybe. But if he's got um, VLS, I would have thought he would have whopping great, you know, harpoon equivalents in there, but... There we go! Whoa. Boom! What's up? Boom. As soon as they die and new harpoons come out, the distance between the pair now is uh, 17 miles. Is this guy actually moving yet? Yeah, he's moving at 21, 26 knots. This guy's 28 knots. So the same thing is just going to get repeated each time until they get within gun range, presumably. Boom, boom, boom. Let's have a look at the range now. It is 15 miles. So it's going to be running out of harpoons soon, I imagine. Oh, there we go, number two. We're now 13 miles. Yeah, that could be the last two, I'm not sure. Oh, oh never mind. No use of the gun yet. So someone's going to run out of missiles at some point. Really is a war of attrition now. He's out of harpoons. We are out of harpoons. Right. Let's make sure they clash here. So set path. Pew. Oops. Set path. Pew. Pew. On the final leg now. They are eight miles. Oh, something's happening. Something's happening. Oh my god. Oh, I see what I did. It's firing the guns, and I think it might have fired some of the mortars at it. Those uh, anti-submarine mortars almost looks like. Wow. Oh, look at the poor FFG. Absolutely slaughtered. Absolutely slaughtered. And he couldn't defend himself. The gun just hasn't got the range. The Malara hasn't got the range. Stop firing at us! Goddamn Soviets, man! Quick, we've got to end this. We've got to get closer to get the malaria in. Come on, full power! Full steam, we can do this. We are... Sad. We're not going to get close enough to get that malaria going. It's really, weirdly really short range. To, you might have to have the frigate turn a little... To like the side? To the right, yeah. Roger, I imagine the gun's probably out of action now, but we'll try it. Okay, so we're going to just change things a little bit. Get there. Fingers crossed. Doesn't look pretty though. Look at that. Did they just stop shooting or did they just run out of a clip and the ammo? I get the feeling they've just thought he's no threat anymore. And he's just going to let it sink. We'll see. Uh, I may be... Oh! Get some! You want some? Go get some! Maybe it's just those guns. This is just amazing. Get some! Get some, you stupid Soviet pig! Boom, 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 boom! Get some! Get some! That is how you do it, Mr. Daishi. Yeah, I, I think that just shows though, this how. Stubborn these ships can be. <laughs> They're really stubborn, like, you don't really 
to make you tear your hair out. So you can see the shell going up. Boom, boom, boom. Get some, get some, boom. Oh, oh, it's just sailed through it, little brat. We've missed every hit. He's smoking, he's smoking. Haha, <laughs> the bullets are still in the air. I see smoke. I think we're out of ammo, sir. Yeah, I think uh, everyone's Winchester, I think yeah. is the term, right? There's one more thing to do, and that's to end this the Grim Reaper's way. Collision course. Unless they start firing again. Yes, turning! It'll be like battleships side on side with the M2 shooting. It would just be so cool. Come get some! Full power! The other thing I find interesting, it doesn't look like the Russian ship is uh, as messed up. I don't know if that's mm. because of its armor or if, is it a modeling? It would really be interesting to know, wouldn't it? Uh, really don't know. Does a 76mm cannon affect this destroyer slash F no, this FFG? Don't know. So that's interesting. Oh, this ain't going to end well, is it? Nothing good can come of this. All hands brace. <laughs> Look how big it is. Oh! Oh, the M2s didn't fire. Gutted. Uh, that was so cool, man. They're just fully Winchester, and they don't even bother firing their M2s because they know they can't even do any damage. Right. That was um, cool in just about every level. The next thing is we're going to try air to air. So stand by for that. It looks like it got a few hits. I mm. think part of the problem might have been maybe part of the fire control system might have been damaged. I yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's actually a good point, isn't it? Right, so what we've got now is uh, the F-15. We're just going to run our way into a fresh uh, Perry class and let's just see what it's like, how hard it is to fight it in terms of air-to-air because -air, I've got no idea what to expect. So the first thing is, burn us on. Let's get up to Angels and let's see. You see, you've already got his... Um, uh, you've already got his nails here, he's a 4 and 9 type uh, search radar, he's a search radar at the moment. We've now got Spike from the 4 and 9, so he's going to fire at us soon. How close are we? Missile out, we've got a missile out. Stop. F9. That is an SM1 from the Mark 13 going out at a range of... Four, wow, 40 miles. That's grumble territory. So that, even though the SM1 is, you know, whatever, 70s, 80s tech, that's firing at... 40 miles, which is uh, which is very impressive. Uh, we'll see how easy it is to defeat now that missile. Um, I won't put my jammer on yet because it will just stop him firing altogether. But we're going to do evasive and um, we're going to use chaff. It's, it's a lofter and it's wow, 2,000 knots. That's a big, fast missile. Right, going to bung our jammer on now. Let that warm up. We're going to have to start manoeuvring to do this thing. <laughs> no chance. No chance. Right, let's go straight back at him. Can't get some. See, he's no longer spiking us because we turned our jammer on. Oh, scratch it, he's spiking us. Ranges now, so he's burnt through our jammer now. Launch. Ah, damn it. Good missiles. Really hard to defeat this ship is. Where are you, little brat? There he is. Right, so we should have a nice sweet spot inside of his SM1 range and outside of his Vulcan range. Or I should be able to loiter around him. Let's test that out. Look, there's a big cannon. There's a cannon firing at me. Those cannons. 
like, yeah. sort of so that was the radar guided OTO uh, Ballara 76 mil one of them hit me I'd know about it how interesting I didn't see that happen on the cruiser well typically five inches wouldn't be used for that it can but usually it's more of an act of desperation watch out what can you do to me sir what can you do to me one thing they hate is having me go around them quickly like this. Their, their track radars generally tend not to move very fast, I say that, as he destroys me. That Felix has got his own radar on, though, and that can actually turn very quickly. Guns chink, can't hit me. I'm going to try and do is see how close I can get over there. I'm a dead man. I'll see how close I can get to him. Got to give me, let's see if we get those M2s firing. Doesn't look like the small arms want to uh, it's a bit annoying, isn't it? Look at those bullets finally landing. Come on, shoot me. Yeah, well, that's it. I think we've used all his ammo up. So the N2s don't fire like the cruiser does, which is interesting, because uh, I really like that. With the cruiser, you get the... The, the Vulcan firing out, and then you get all the M2s as well. And annoyingly, the um, I can't get the OTA to fire again. I'd love to get that to fire again. Can we see if it's pointing at us? I think it's because I'm spinning around too much. No, it's given up. Look, um, let's see if just out of interest. Let's see if I've got a higher range. Try and get that OTA fire. Look, there's the M2s. They're M2s. They're red, they're red shells. So you can. That's M2s. So you can get them firing. All right. That changes everything. Stop turning the aeroplane. There's, there's the Ota. Bang, bang, bang. 76 mil shells flying past me. There's the Ota again. Bang, 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 bang. It just doesn't like it when I'm so close. It can't track me with its turret. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, you might be turning too fast for its traverse. Roger. Oh, he's not going to fire now, is he? That's typical. Right. Um, I think... I think that will zone everything we can with it. It's a pretty good vessel. I'm chuffed for that. I'm going to try and use that in the next coffee mission if I can. I think that would be a really cool little vessel to use, even though it's stubborn as heck. Stubborn as an old meal. Anything you want to add to that, Daishi, before we sign off? Um, not too much. I, like, I thought the OTO had like some sort of flak, but I might be wrong on that one. Roger. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks for helping, and thanks for everyone for watching, and we'll see you later.